Okie dokie, artichoke. So I wasn't actually planning on recording a video, but I have a lot of energy to burn today and I figured I should probably utilize it into something for you. You're welcome. Um, yeah, didn't even really know what this is gonna be about, but I can talk, girl can talk. And so I thought I'd just check in with you guys and see what's up. Tell you a little bit about how 2020 was for me, things that are probably maybe hopefully going to happen, um, things that I'm manifesting in 2021, any kind of changes and updates. This is just like a general life update. I feel like I check in on YouTube every like six months and I'm just like, hey, here's an update. And that's what happens. And that's my whole YouTube channel. And that's going to change in 2021. In my head, I'm like, I can get on top of all this better when I have my own place again because I just feel like I'm in the way in the family home when I'm filming because it feels really, I don't know, pointless almost. Like even just like cooking stuff. I don't even cook as much in the family home because I feel like I'm in the way, even though I'm not, and no one else might even be in the kitchen. I just feel like, I don't know. I, I just want my own place. I want my own place. I want a family. I've wanted a family for so long. I just, I can't wait to be a mother. I feel like it's, I feel like that's what I was made to do. Like that sounds, maybe it sounds weird to you, maybe it doesn't at all. Maybe you're sitting there going, yes, same, same, absolutely. But it feels like, yeah, I just, oh, on a cellular level, I want a family and kids so bad. I want a dog. I want ducks. I want a pond in the backyard with lilies that I can swim in and hopefully doesn't have an eel in it. I want to be able to walk to the beach in the morning and go for my morning runs and watch heaps more sunrises. I want to get better sleep. I want to get to bed at like 9, 8.45. I want to get to bed at 8.45 so I can be asleep by 9, which never happens. I like to think it does, but in reality, it's more like the time between 9 p.m. and 1 a.m., I don't know where it goes. I genuinely think that my, all the clocks in the world are broken and that's just, that's just what happens at that time of night. Time just disappears from you. Because what other explanation is that? There's no other explanation. Also, hello to um, this personality of mine. You may not have, what is this? Oh, um, yeah, you may not have met this personality of mine before. She's, she's very um, spontaneous and loud and um, doesn't think before she speaks. She, she thinks as she speaks, she thinks out loud. Yes, she thinks out loud. She processes things out loud and she learns out loud as well. She asks a lot of questions. She doesn't breathe a lot, apparently, and she speaks a lot. Like you'll find, you'll be, I could have a conversation with someone, like my best mate Skybear, I'll have a conversation with him when I'm in this mood. And he will be like, literally, you don't need me for this conversation. Like you ask a question, you answer it. You ponder about your answer and you find 25 different answers. And then we come back to the same question because I don't actually come to any kind of resolution. And that is this personality. I haven't named this personality either. So if you can think of a good personality for whatever this energy right here that I'm currently embodying, if you're picking up what I'm putting down, maybe just like comment below a good name for this this personality that I, yeah, this energy, because I don't know. I have, I know I call the seductress is one of my other ones. And she's when I'm really in my femininity and she's like, I go to the beach and I like dance and I like feel the sand in my hands and I like touch trees and I hug trees and I talk to the earth and I sing to the earth and I sing out loud. And I, yeah, I just kind of like move around and it's when I'm, I'm fluid and I'm creative. That's my seductress. I don't have a name for this one. This is like, She's like fun, but she's also dumb, the one that I'm currently embodying. Well, not dumb, she's just thoughtless. She doesn't think things through very well. Um, yeah, way too spontaneous for her own good. I was currently in this, I was in this mood on my birthday this year when I went and got a whole bunch of new tattoos, which sounds really, I don't know what that would sound like to you. Maybe you'd be like, that's awesome, cool. And then maybe you're like, dude, maybe just think before you do things like that, <laughs> which I probably should have done, but I didn't. So what are you going to do about it? And you want to know a secret? I'm actually going to go and get a lot of them removed, <laughs> which at first I was like, mm, why did I do this to myself? But then I was like, you know what? Go with the flow. It's kind of just a metaphor for life. Nothing's permanent. Everything's temporary. Even like tattoos. 
sure you get them removed but even like even if you didn't get them removed they're also temporary as in not like they'll wash off but i mean it, it, like everything is temporary this body is temporary our life is temporary so i don't know i'm not i'm not mad at myself for the fact that i went and got tattoos that i'm now gonna go and get them all removed so what are you gonna do about it um i will keep you updated with that actually um the process of it because i'm sure at least one person out there watching this is probably like yeah i got some tattoos that i could probably think about getting removed maybe you didn't even know that was a thing i'm going to get some tattoos removed i will film it for you and share it the process apparently it's more painful than getting a tattoo i didn't think getting a tattoo was that painful anyway i don't know about you but um why am i staring off in space i think it's like it's it's quite intense and um confronting to talk to yourself it's on selfie mode on my camera I should just like, yeah, I feel like I need to look away. I'm sorry. I will be present. I'm not looking at me. I'm looking at you. You. Soldier for Atro. Oh, also, I'm thinking also of starting a podcast this year. That's something that I've been wanting to do for years. Literally years. Um, and I haven't done it. I don't know why. I haven't got a good explanation other than that I'm lazy because I'm human and we all like to procrastinate. I am definitely a queen of procrastination. Yeah, I also, um, I have a feeling that this kind of energy isn't exactly, um, yeah, it isn't really relaxing enough for a podcast, but at the same time, I'm like, it'll be interesting to see what happens and you will meet all of the different personalities on there, I'm sure. I want to interview really cool people. I want to like learn heaps of cool stuff and just share it with you and then just share like thoughts of the day because apparently um, I'm, I'm like that friend that you probably have. Um, everyone has that friend and I'm that friend on many levels, but one of those that friends is um, the one that like needs to have their own encyclopedia, like comes up with all these different things. And I never write them down. I should always write them down, but yeah. So you will see a lot more of that as well. I hope, oh, I need to stick to this thing. I have a couple of projects that I've been working on the whole of 2020. One in particular that I'm insanely excited about. Um, but, you know, I gotta stay on the deal with that. That's a secret that you can uh, stay tuned for. Get excited, but stay tuned. <laughs> And then, um, yeah, a couple of other things as well. Things that I've just been, what did I write down? I wrote down, here you go, I'll share with you my manifestation list. Things that I want to do in 2021. Ha ha, ha ha, ha ha. Okay, secret, second secret, podcast, um... There may or may not be something to do with, it's also kind of a secret, but I'm going to give you a little hint on this one. This one may or may not have something to do with um, the fact that I'm always at the beach and I love the ocean. Just saying. Um, another secret. <laughs> I have a lot of secrets that I can't wait to share with you, but I can't tell you about yet. And it's killing me. Um... Something that I did in 2020 was at the end of 2020 and only just recently launched, actually, I filmed yoga for a kid's app. It's called Fly By Fun. So if you have little ones or if you have like, I don't know, little cousins or sip, like younger siblings and stuff, it's pretty much all ages um, in the kids department. So anything under like 12-ish to 14, maybe even, um, there's yoga classes up there for you. So they're set out into different age categories as well. Um, some are really simple. We go on like yoga adventures, like the really little kids and we just move our bodies and we have fun exploring different imagination um, concepts and different, yeah, just a whole bunch of fun. It's so much fun doing that. And I love teaching children. And then we do some for the older kids as well, which are more just actual yoga flows. So yeah, I have a couple of friends kids who really enjoy doing yoga and they find that the like the adventure stuff that they find online for kids isn't really it's not cool enough for them and it's not hard enough so i yeah i did a little bit of both um and i would really personally love your feedback if your kids have tried that or if you know someone who's tried that just letting me know whether they like it yeah so it's called the fly by fun kids app you can find it on the fly by fun um 
Instagram, swipe up, it's on their website as well. You'll be able to find it just by searching it on Google or the app stores and stuff like that, I'm sure. And yeah, it's it was so much fun to film. There's also, so I do yoga, but there's also, um, it's like a whole bunch of things. So it's an interesting backstory. They started off as party fairies. So the girls who would go and like paint kids' faces and entertain them at children's parties. And then it built into like a whole business in Australia and it was huge. And then with COVID having to shut down, they found that kids still really needed to feel special and to celebrate their birthdays um, and to have fun just in general. So they started doing Zoom birthday parties and um, that kind of created the concept to have it all in one place. So they have different people for different things. So they have me for yoga, they have a hip hop dance, they have a magician, they have a juggler, they have um, Commando Steve, the guy from Biggest Loser, teaches kids commando like workout stuff, which I think is really cool. And then they have just, yeah, like sing along stuff. It's It would be really fun if I was a kid. I'm not a kid and I still wanna go and like, oh, they also have a ballerina. So they have, yeah, there's a whole bunch of stuff on there. Wow, I need to breathe. Um, what else did I do in 2020 besides working on this stuff? My book launch, that was super exciting. I wrote a book, I wrote a poetry and photography book. It's called You Will Rise. I will show it to you right now. I think I've shown it to you before anyway, but just in case. Da -da 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 -da. Woo! I wrote a book. Like that's me. That's my name. That's the title. Seek, Soothe, and Soar. You will rise. And it's got Boy, yo, see it glow. Oh, that's so satisfying. Um, oh, there we go. That's even better. Yes, so it's super thick as well. Hardcover, 328 pages, and just a mix of oh, how do you do this? Poetry and photography. And it's like my little baby. So you can read it cover to cover, and I've done that thrice. I've done that three times. Or what I like to do is to set an intention, close my eyes, and open to a page. From now on, I'm going to say yes. Yes to the things that I was once afraid of. Yes to the things beyond my comfort zone. And yes to everything I used to say no to. Yes to me, yes to you. Yes to liberation. Yes to healing. Yes to expansion and yes to love. So that's my book. I also enjoy using it as I read out stuff um, through my yoga practices. I want to teach a lot more yoga in 2021. I missed that in 2020. Having the yoga, the yoga studio closed was, that was hard. That was genuinely hard. And then when we reopened with all the little restrictions and stuff like that, well, not so little restrictions, with all the restrictions, it was really hard because I couldn't go like I used to. So there was a limit of 20 in the studio and they all had to go to not teachers, um, to students. So it was always full and yeah, so I couldn't get into the studio like I used to and I missed it so much. And I just taught my first class this morning of the year. It was the first class in the studio of the year and it was the first yoga class I'd done of the year and it felt so good. Um, I wanna have some events. I wanna do some more retreats in 2021. Um, another secret. I want to do a Vipassana, which is like a 10 day silent retreat. I don't know whether I'll actually be able to do that realistically because of a lot of the secrets that I have. I probably need to be available to figure things out if anything goes wrong, but I would love to do a Vipassana. I was supposed to do one in 2020. I was supposed to be in Nepal in March. That was the first trip of mine that actually got canceled. Supposed to go to Nepal with my mum, my mama bear. We were going to go over and do a charity bill for Habitat for Humanity, building homes in some of the local villages for women over there. Um, and two days before we were supposed to leave, it got cancelled. That was like, that was March. That was everyone's March though, I think. That was just when everything kind of hit the fan and stuff went crazy. So, um, yeah, and then after that, I was supposed to stay in Nepal and do a Vipassana, which is 10 days silent. It sounds, it might sound insane to you. It might sound lovely. It sounded like my soul was yearning for it at the time. Was, um, yeah, it's 10 days of just meditation. So there's no other stimuli allowed. So you're not allowed to do yoga. 
you're not allowed to sing, to talk, to read, to write, to make art. You're not allowed to do anything except for, or not even you're not allowed to, you don't do anything except for meditate realistically for like at least 10 hours a day. And then you sleep, you do a little bit of karmic work around, around, I assume, I haven't actually mean, I just assume this is what happens um, around the ashram and yeah, I was really looking forward to that. I thought that that was going to be a really cathartic and healing experience and journey and something that I was being called to for a while. Um, I've also been called to sit in ceremony and I'm hoping to be able to do that this year. I haven't done that before. Um, I met some really cool people last year, actually. Yeah, especially in Byron. That was kind of the only place that I went after, well, after COVID kind of hit and happened. Um, yeah, I just, I love Byron. I love Byron so much. I would love to have a house in a hinterland in Byron, but it's so darn expensive. And I don't want to be in Byron, even though that's even more expensive, but being in actual Byron, it's just so busy. It takes like an hour now to get from the highway into town. That's insane. It's like two kilometers or something silly. There's just so much traffic in there and it doesn't have the infrastructure. It's not built for that capacity, like to have that many people. So even during COVID when there hasn't been tourists, it's still been insanely hectic. I can't even imagine living in there. Apparently the energy of Byron is quite heavy as well. Like the energy of the land itself. And I, I've, Never felt that. Apparently you only feel it if you're there for an extended period of time or if you live there. Um, so I have some friends who grew up there and they said like they, they started to feel it and they were like, I need to get out of here, even just into the hinterland, just away from, it's like the really heavy, just happening, buzzing, I guess probably a very masculine um, energy, I suppose. But it's not like Byron, oh, yeah, I haven't been there extended periods of time, I guess. I always just go in transit and it's a ball. I love Byron, especially like the outskirts because all my friends like live in the hinterland and in these little pockets of just pure gold. Oh, I miss Byron energy. Yeah, I would love to be there. Get a dog, a duck or lots of ducks, maybe some goats. Oh my God, how cool would it be to have goats and to be able to do goat yoga? I would love that. Oh, I also want to learn to roller skate this year. That was on my, that wasn't my actual list. Where is my actual list? I have to find my actual list for you because I think it's pretty impressive the things that I want to learn. At the end of each year, I write down um, a bunch of different things under different headings. So I write down physical skills. I write down or physical slash skills, like things that I want to attain or learn or develop in terms of skills and physical beingness. Um, so some of those for me were roller skating. I want to learn to confidently and comfortably roller skate, even just so that I can like dance and not fall over in them. That's kind of my goal. Um, press to handstand, which is something that I used to be able to do when I was really, really little. I used to do gymnastics growing up and I was always really good at handstands and being upside down. I wasn't necessarily flexible. Um, and yeah, I was really strong, but strength and flexibility don't exactly go hand in hand. They're kind of opposites to be honest. And so yoga is interesting because it's finding a balance between the two, which is why I think I love yoga so much. Okay. There's so many reasons why I love yoga so much, but that would be one of them. Um, yeah, so press your handstand, you kind of sit on the ground and you put your legs out wide, you put your hands down and then you, <laughs> I don't know how I used to do this, but then you push down on your hands and you lift your hips up, stack your hips above your shoulders and then your feet come together and you're in the handstand and then you go back down. I used to do 16 of those in a row without putting my bum back down on the ground. I don't think that's ever going to happen again. I think that was probably just a childhood thing, but... Yeah, I don't actually even think that I'm going to... No, I take that back. I'm totally going to get my press to handstand again this year. <laughs> totally. <laughs> a girl can dream. Let me dream. Um, I want to work deeper on my back bends. I used to have a deeper back bend practice and I just, yeah, lost touch with that. And I would love to be able to explore that again. Heart opener is a... Oh, there's nothing like a really good deep heart opener. So I'd like to get back there. Um, 
standing splits. I can do the splits on the ground. I can go over splits on the ground. That's fine. But I don't have a lot of strength in my hip flexors. So, or maybe I have too much strength in my, no, it's, I don't have enough strength in my hip flexors. So even just like holding my leg up, like standing there and holding my leg up like this, oh, like that's hard. So I want to be able to work better on my hip flex, flex, my hip flex, my hip flex, not flexibility, strength. <laughs> Whoa. Um, I do standing splits because that's like just a vertical splits, but I can't, I have I can't get, the, I need gravity to help me at the moment. Um, or, no, that's a lie. I don't need gravity. I need the floor. And so I want to not use the floor. I'm going to do them vertical. Um, full middle split straddle. I'm close, but I want to be able to get back to what I used to be able to do. And then I want to build my booty. I've been doing Pilates. I started Pilates last year. I go to a place. Um, in Newcastle called the yoga space, uh, the yoga space, it's called the Pilates space <laughs> and it's really good. It's reformers and I love it so far. I do a bunch of assets and burn classes. I try to do three a week. Um, I got a membership, which keeps me, what do you call it? Like accountable. And then I have to go cause I'm like, well, it paid for it. And if you don't rock up, then you take someone else's space and then you just feel greedy. So I like to rock up. Um, yeah. And then the next heading is personal. Um, personal growth slash relationships slash health. So things under this title for me is get to bed earlier, 8.45, rise earlier, 5 a.m. club, um, read. I want to try to read at least one book a month, so 12 books. And I've put them down in a little section in my little bookshelf. I don't, I'm really slow at reading. Like it took me, I think it took me like 10 months to read Shantaram. Sure, Shantaram is like the thickest book ever. Not actually, but it's like very thick book. It is literally like this thick. Um, but I loved it. It just, I'm so slow and I don't give myself the time or the relaxation and the space. Like I'm like this all the time. I'm like, Aah! which is why yoga to me is like, oh, I can breathe. People think that yoga teachers, that's, what's that thing? There's like a meme and they're like, people think yoga teachers are so zen, but we're not. That's why we do yoga because otherwise we're just like crazy. Um, heal relationship with self. So as everyone does, we all go through personal things and there are a bunch of things that I would, yeah, I would like to heal within myself. Uh, some of those just things that come up and then they go and others, um, I guess, weren't behaviors or um, beliefs, things that I've been limited by for 11 years, maybe longer. So yeah, there's a whole bunch of things within that that I would like to be able to heal. Um, I'm celiac. I have been since birth, which means that I can't eat wheat or gluten. And there's a whole bunch of other grains and proteins under that as well. So things like maltodextrin, um, we can't have like rye, can't have sourdough. Some people say that you can. I can't have oats. So a lot of the time oats are considered gluten-free and technically they are gluten-free, but they're not celiac approved or at least they get me bad. So like, yeah, I, I got caught a couple of times, well, all the time throughout my life, um, eating wheat accidentally or like thinking something's gluten-free or something had gluten in it. And I'll be like, oh no, I've been good lately. I'll just have a little bit. And that's really bad. So it's on here to not eat gluten at all this whole year. No gluten, nada. Good job. Um, meditation daily. So meditation has progressively become more and more implemented into my personal practice and into my daily routine. And I find it so healing and helpful to do it first thing in the morning or sometime in the morning. If I don't get to do it in the morning, I will try to do it at, in the afternoon or at night. Um, just 20 minutes. And if I can't do 20 minutes, 10 minutes. If I can't do 10 minutes, two minutes. Like literally just one hand on the heart, one hand on the belly, connecting to my body, connecting to the present moment, connecting to my breath and finding gratitude for the here and now is profoundly, it's, it's so beneficial and you don't even realize it. And I know that you probably heard that a hundred times, but unless you have that practice for yourself as well, um, 
it's hard to comprehend exactly the extent of how beneficial and how helpful and how healing it can be. So yeah, I like to do a, a good morning prime routine, a primer, a priming routine in the morning. I love a good morning routine. Oh, I got to do more videos for you guys. Anyway, um, and less Uber Eats. <laughs> Let's be honest. I order way too much Uber Eats. So does my brother. But yeah. Like, I live in the family home now. My mum's such a good cook. And we both order Uber Eats heaps anyway. So, yeah, we've got to stop doing that. Got to cook more, less Uber. Um, okay, then another title topic thing is mindset slash attitude. So, I like to go into a new year with a certain, I don't know, quote or just a mentality, a way to approach the whole year. Um, and this year's is healing equals discomfort acceptance and growth this year is the year of healing transformation for me um i've had a lot of visualizations and um yeah just visions of butterflies which have increasingly become more and more meaningful to me even since getting a title of a butterfly like this one is my favorite one um and i had a butterfly actually last year in february land on my butterfly it was the most beautiful thing ever it was in dubai um yeah and butterflies have just they've always been a beautiful creature to me in a very um symbolic creature as well but they're just amazing i listened to a really cool podcast the other day um called oh my god what was it i'm gonna have to find this for you and i will put it in the description below um it was like isms or something it was really cool whatever it was it was about moths and butterflies i learned so much so i would highly recommend that and i will definitely link it below so that you can find it as well um and then i have career slash business slash financial as the next heading and so this is where i put a bunch of stuff that i probably can't tell you about because this is all of my secret things that i've been working on and manifesting um and contributing a lot of energy to oh, so much goes on behind the scenes people are like how do I do it you do I don't want to work a nine till five and that's fabulous if you don't want to work a nine to five don't do a nine till five and if you are stuck in a nine till five find a side hustle that you can contribute some spare energy towards even just an hour or two in the evenings until you can make enough money and sustain yourself to be able to then transition to being fully um in that and dedicated to that. That would be how I would personally recommend going from one to the other. That isn't how I did it. I found it really young and yeah, there is, I, I can't recommend to you how I did it and I can't even explain to you how I did it because at the time when I transitioned into like, I hate the word influencer, everyone hates the word influencer, but what else are you gonna say? Like content creator is just a fancy word for it. So content creator. Um, and then again, I feel like that's more like videographers who should call themselves content creators, even though everyone technically on social media is a content creator, regardless of how many people follow them. Like if you've taken a photo and posted it, you've created some kind of content for people to consume. So therefore you're a content creator. Congrats, pat on the back. Woo! Um, wow, I literally need to learn to breathe. See what I mean? Like I've been speaking for like 28 minutes and if you're still here, high five, congrats, kudos. You deserve a couple of medals and like a really big trophy. I don't know, maybe like a, fan maybe i'll make your fan i don't know like a cool you down because you're so hot um yeah i want to buy a house i've been looking at real estate it's one of my favorite pastimes if you know anything about me i love real estate um but i've been looking for probably like three years now definitely minimum of two no three yeah i've always loved looking at properties and real estate like interior design and stuff sure but i don't know there's something about real estate that just gets me like imagining yourself in these places and how you could do them up and make them better and um yeah like I just I see a house and I envision myself living there or not living there and then I'm like oh next one um yeah I really want to get a house and somewhere preferably within walking distance to a beach but I understand that like you know it's a first home I probably can't afford that so um whatever I can afford yeah and i want high ceilings and i want everything to be like really light and open and airy and lots of white and 
natural woods. I hate stained wood and I hate polished floors. Ugh, pet peeves. Pet peeves are like colored anything. I saw a house the other day that the interior looked like the Wiggles. Literally looked like the Wiggles. I was like, why is this place so cheap? And then I was like, oh, that's why. Cause it's the Wiggles Central. And I love the Wiggles. Shout out to the Wiggles. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Do you guys have the Wiggles in the States? Is the Wiggles only Australian? Oh my God, if you don't have the Wiggles, you missed out. The Wiggles was our childhood. I hope you I hope you know what I'm talking about because it was brilliant. They were like these, I think they were four. I'm going to go with four. Might have been five, but I'm going to go with four. They were initially all guys. They've now bought in a girl, which I love. Um, and they used to wear these really high neck turtle skivvies and they were all different colors. They had like the Wiggles logo. And they used to get in this big red car and there was this song about everything. And it was like, toot, toot, chug it, chug it, big red car. We travel near and we travel far. Toot, toot, chug it, chug it, big red car. We got, I just spat because I got so excited. Woo. Um, anyway, um, other things. Things that um, I can't share any of these with you. I want to be able to share those with you, but I can't. So I have a whole bunch of career business financial things that I want to do, but they're super secret. Um, also, I only just realized this, but my eyebrows are like not on the, like they are there, but you got to go really close in to see. It looks like my eyebrow just like stops halfway. How strange is that? I think that's why a lot of girls use eyebrow pencils, but I ain't got no time for that. <laughs> like, look at me. This is the best it gets. That's it. <laughs> and I don't care. Um, I did learn to brush my hair last year though. I mean, I always knew how to brush my hair, but I just never did it. And I started brushing my hair sometimes before I got in the shower and it made it so much easier to put your fingers through it with a conditioner. Who would have known? Um, yeah. I want to tell you guys about my future house that I want to get. Okay, on second thoughts, I actually have to go and move my car for my brother because he's home and I hate recording videos once other people are in the house because I'm super weird like that. Um, so I'm going to love you and leave you. Bye.